Now then, <coughs> what's of interest is to identify the kind of uh, mollusk which first appeared in the Cambrian. Which of those different ways of life that the mollusks can lead was led by those that appeared first in the Cambrian? Well, the ones which first appeared in the Cambrian were those which were deposit feeders. They were gastropods dominantly, the snails, that crawled across the muddy sea floor and ate the mud or ate the organic material in the mud. There were not very many filter feeder mollusks like the clams in the Cambrian uh, or on the Cambrian sea floor. There were not very many carnivores. There were not very many of the octopus-like um, cephalopods with tentacles that captured moving prey on the Cambrian seafloor. There were some, but not very many. Now, what does this tell us? Well, it seems to show that the Cambrian seafloor was dominated by organisms which were deposit feeders, by things like worms which crawled through the mud. It's the Cambrian fauna is very similar to the Ediacara fauna, that Precambrian uh, collection of organisms that we showed you earlier. There also, the dominant organisms were deposit feeders. This is an, an interesting conclusion. It means that although the organisms that we see in the Cambrian had suddenly developed uh, skeletons of a kind, calcium carbonate shells, and in the case of the trilobites, a kind of a or horny material that's related to the kind of skeleton that beetles have. Although these organisms developed skeletons, they were basically living the same kind of life as the multicelled Precambrian organisms. Now, that didn't continue because later on in the Ordovician, we see the advent of different kinds of organisms. Let's have a look at some of those. Succeeding the Cambrian in the Ordovician, we had the f burst of graptolites. Now, you don't see them very well on this specimen because graptolites are very, very small fossils. Um, they floated. They weren't deposit feeders. They floated high in the water, probably just beneath the surface, rather like floating seaweed although they were animals. There are some very, very well-preserved graptolites which we can dissolve out of limestone, remembering that uh, the silicification means of being fossilized. We can dissolve out some uh, graptolites in the same kind of fashion as we can dissolve out silicified fossils. The graptolites then floating organisms. Another fossil that we find dominant in the Ordovician system, Ordovician seafloor occupants, are the brachiopods. The brachiopods, like the clams, have two shells. Here is one, and here on the other side is the other, and they were hinged together, and the brachiopod lived like this on the seafloor, opening its valves, or its shelves, like so, and how did it live? It lived by filtering the seawater. Here is another brachiopod. Again, two valves. And remember, brachiopods fill. Same applies to the corals. This is a horn coral that lived like this on the sea floor with filter arms, if you like, to filter the water uh, that flowed over the top of it. It stood maybe six inches above the, the sea floor. Here are other horn corals with a less distinctive, less distinctive shape. But remember, filter feeders. And then, finally, we've got the 
echinoderms here. This is a, a recent sea star, one from the uh, Pacific coast. You must have seen these. It's one of the echinoderms, the spiny skinned organisms. A carnivore. And here is a related echinoderm, a sea urchin from the Jurassic. And here another, this from the uh, Cretaceous, and showing the sediment inside the fossil. This is another recent sea star, this time with many, many arms, instead of just the five of most sea stars. Those sea urchins and sea stars are carnivores and filter feeders. So in the Ordovician, what we have are sea stars like this from the fossil record and like this one. The appearance in the Ordovician to continue into the Silurian and the Devonian and the later uh, Paleozoic systems, the appearance of many filter feeding organisms. Quite a change from the Cambrian. Now then, why might that have come about? Why do we get deposit feeders in the Precambrian, deposit feeders in the Cambrian, and then this change in the Ordovician bringing in this multitude of different uh, organisms, many of which are deposit feeders, some of them carnivores. Well, that's a question that's only just begun to be answered. Uh, in the last five years, it's been suggested that, in fact, continental drift provides us with the answer to this pattern of development of the uh, animal life on the Paleozoic sea floor. Think of what the climate is like surrounding a large continent. Think of, for example, North America. Our own climate in, uh, in Ontario is very extreme. During the winter, it's very cold. During the summer, it's quite hot. And that uh, continental climate on the land controls very much the kind of conditions uh, that uh, exist in the shallow seas off the coast of our continent. During the winter, cold winds tend to blow over those shallow seas, and during the summer, the water can get much warmer because the cold winds have, have ceased. Now, that's a, a very much a generalization, but we can basically say that around large continents, the seasonal fluctuations in the seawater are very much greater than around small continents, broken up uh, continents, because the influence of the land mass on the climate is very much less. Now then, in the Precambrian, it's thought that the continents were probably gathered together into one great supercontinent. And this would mean that the climate would be quite extreme and the conditions in the shallow seas around the continent would fluctuate markedly. And that would mean that things like algae 